Hello and a warm welcome to The Federal. I'm Neelu Vyas. The entire focus of the budget now has shifted to Adani Group and the Adani Enterprises because Gautam Adani late last evening announced that he is withdrawing his fully subscribed FPO and that the money of all the investors will be returned back and this will not have any impact on the future prospects of his company. Following this story, there was a distress fall which was seen in the markets. Today, we saw there was a 10% drop in, uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the stock and uh, it was almost like a bloodbath. And after this, there was a ruckus in parliament inside both houses, Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha, where the opposition demanded a discussion on Adani's FPO. So the question we are asking today is that, is this a rare defeat of Adani? And will the government really order an inquiry? Will the government order an investigation? And how is this situation really going to impact the economy and our market fundamentals? I'm joined by a very veteran now. Panel uh, joining me on this uh, program is Sri Ram Subramaniam, who is a uh, managing director and founder of Proxy Advisory Firm in Govern. I'm also joined by Professor Santosh Mehrotra, who's been a technocrat in the Union Government of India from 2006 to 2014. He's a renowned economist. And I'm also joined by Giri Prakash, who's the business editor of the Federal. I welcome all of you on the program. And uh, I'll come to you first, Professor Santosh Mehrotra. So given the free fall in the market, 10% fall in the market, which was witnessed this morning, and now uh, SEBI and RBI almost asking uh, uh, the Adani group for the details of whatever exposures have happened. How do you really look at the situation which is evolving right now? Well, I think more important than the fall in the overall market is what has happened to the net worth of Mr. Radani's companies, and they have fallen from their stratospheric level of $120 billion by $100 billion. They are down to $20 billion, which is the level that which they were, if I remember correctly, about three years ago. So this meteoric rise to stratospheric levels was clearly engineered in some way because it is almost historic that that kind of thing happened. So um, it's a good news that finally that RBI and, and SEBI are waking up. Honestly, I'd like to know why LIC has not woken up, or maybe they have, and we don't know. And we really want to question the governance of the market in our country, in particularly from these three institutions. But I'm sure we will have occasion to discuss the governance within each of these institutions, but also corporate governance as a whole, because this calls into question the state of corporate governance within our big corporates. And finally, it calls into question what was the government doing while all of this was happening? So let me stop there for the moment. Okay. Uh, I'll come to Mr. Subramanian now. Uh, so what is really happening in the market? And are we to presume that our uh, the structural foundations of our economy have really shaken up with this uh, uh, you know, this entire incident which has happened with the Adani Enterprises, uh, given the impact of the Hindenburg report. So how do you really see that? Are we in a position to say that our market fundamentals are not strong, our uh, structural foundations of the economy have really shaken up because of this? Oh, absolutely not. I mean, if anything, that is uh, too much of a, uh, I mean, that's like a thousand percent stretch, right? Forget structural impact on our economy. It's, it's not even impacted the Adani Group companies so from an operating perspective. The stock prices have tanked, yes. But from an operating perspective, Adani's, if you're in Mumbai, you switch on the uh, light, you're probably consuming Adani service. If you're using the Mumbai airport, you're consuming Adani services. All I'm saying is that fundamentally, Adani Group uh, is in the infrastructure sector which is a much wanted service for each one of us. So we are all 
probably their business impact, if anything, is not uh, much impacted. If anything, because this 20,000 crore FPO was supposed to fund some expansion projects, pay off some debt, etc., maybe they will put some plans on hold or maybe they will uh, borrow some more money, etc. But fundamentally, that has not changed. And uh, you referred to the stock price declining by 10% yesterday, it had tanked by 28%, etc. So this glorification of media is also a culprit in glorifying that Adani is the second largest, uh, richest individual in the world, uh, $100 billion, fastest growing, etc., etc. So, and just even last month, all these media reports said that. The same works for Elon Musk. Elon Musk's uh, loss probably uh, was the fastest to lose $100 billion in wealth, etc. The same is happening here with uh, Mr. Radani's wealth. But what is should be of concern to us or SEBI or uh, uh, others as media is what is the impact to retail shareholders? What is the impact to... We are not bothered about the impact to uh, Gautam Adani's wealth. I mean, it was anyway a paper wealth. It is going to be a paper wealth for time in more and more. Absolutely. We as SEBI or regulators should be concerned about what is the impact to retail shareholders. We, many of the Arani Group stocks had very free, uh, very low free flow, and the holdings by retail uh, investors is very low. In fact, domestic uh, mutual funds were very sane to have no exposure at all to most Arani companies. Probably a little exposure to Arani ports, which is a huge cash generating machine. So all we are saying is, should we be as concerned as even a regulator? Uh, probably not. In fact, one has to do the math here. But if you do the math, no, I, I, I can, can say that there are a lot of, the, the free float, Sorry, just one you. point. Just ah. one point. The combined free float of all the Adani Group stocks will be much lower than the free float of a ITC or an Infosys, for that matter. No, but you, you said that as a regulator, we shouldn't be so worried. On that point, I wanted to come to you, Mr. Subramanian, that uh, people are saying that, you know, SEBI should have intervened, intervened earlier, RBI should have intervened earlier. So they they are trying to ask questions, but those questions are coming in very late. We could have prevented this kind of a situation. So uh, shouldn't those questions be asked of SEBI and RBI? No, no. What is the situation you are saying? Is all I'm, <laughs> the situation that you are talking about is a crash in stock price, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, beyond that, what is the situation? And that has happened globally. Even, I mean, if you think of it, uh, not just here, right? I mean, Paytm stock price tanked uh, 75% this year. Uh, other stocks have tanked 75% this year. So all I'm saying is, what is the situation in that sense? We are ascribing more importance to a stock price crash than is uh, anything else. Uh, I think, uh, if anything, I mean, if, if, if I were to ask the same question that you were asking, should uh, the regulator SEBI pay more credence to the Hindenburg report, etc.? Yes, there there have to on some aspects. Okay, there have been even as proxy advisory firms over the last couple of years, we have voted against many of the proposals that Adani Group companies uh, uh, came out with. Right, so. And other news, Indian news journal, uh, journalists and magazines have reported or talked about many of the issues that Hindenburg had raised. Just because right. Hindenburg is raising, SEBI shouldn't uh, react to it as a knee jerk, right? Hmm. And RBI, if anything, has asked the banks, Indian banks, for their exposure to the Adani Group companies to figure out whether that exposure is uh, how, to what extent it is that. By itself doesn't mean anything, right? I mean, because even the CLSA report talked that uh, much of the funding, the uh, much of the debt that Adani's group companies have is funded by foreign uh, bondholders. One, two is uh, it's funded uh, uh, only up to some fifty thousand or fifty-five thousand crores by uh, public sector banks, and which I would think is a very small number given the fact that many of the assets. Uh, are infrastructure assets. These are long gestation assets, and much of it would be, have been collateralized. So, right. so that is my submission. Okay. okay. Uh, let me come to Giri now. Giri, this kind of a blockbuster uh, uh, share sale which has happened, and uh, uh, 
the and adani all of a sudden had to withdraw last evening now this kind of a withdrawal do you think that is unprecedented or uh, it happens in the normal course of things no it doesn't happen in the normal course of things at all uh, uh, this hasn't happened for a long time and uh, uh, a size of around 2 and a half billion dollars is uh, quite unique uh, they may have mr subramanian might uh, might uh, tell me tell us about uh, uh, the things that have happened before but at at a at a much lesser scale and this is this is really big um so there, there are two ways to look at it uh, one way to look at it is that he has been honest enough to admit uh that investors should get impacted uh at a time when um, but for me the timing was very 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 surprising it happened on the day of the union budget and the union budget uh, the, the the stock market uh, gave it a big thumbs up and uh, one expected that it will uh, actually continue today also um uh, and and this happened at that time so for me i'm very surprised about the uh, timing of uh, mr adani's uh, disclosure Uh, and uh, agreeing to uh, return all the money to the investors that's one part of it the other part of it is i personally believe uh, that um, these things uh, one should not look at it in a very negative sense uh, after the harshad mehta scam the regulators uh, saw to it that these kind of scams don't happen loopholes were plugged and like that something like this is happening we need to know what's the kind of debt exposure that uh, indian banks have uh, as far as adani group uh, no uh, enterprises adani group companies are concerned and going forward uh, if there are any loopholes uh, uh, that will also get plugged so i fully agree with mr subramanian there isn't much floating stock uh, retain investors exposure is very less and uh, adani enterprises uh, the adani group itself holds 73% um and the 75 74.99 percent is the limit so not much exposure there and uh, quite a few others as well so for the retail investors it's not big but at the same time it's good that the rbi and sebi are now taking step to see that no further damages are caused mute Yes, Professor Mehrotra, if I can come to you, uh, would that be a little more optimistic way of looking at it? Uh, the way Mr. Subramanian and uh, Giri have explained, uh, why should we really worry with uh, this? Uh, I don't know whether to call it a scam or a fraud, but uh, there's so much of political heat over this issue, and uh, given the fact that he was the third richest uh, man who was seen as someone very, very close to the ruling dispensation, so why should it really worry? as uh, as far as the economy is concerned as far as the investors are concerned why should we really worry at this point of time if everything is okay almost well <laughs> i can only say that um there was enough information in advance for the regulator to have acted earlier the real question is why is the regulator now being forced to act when an international agency a short seller indeed who's made money but the why is the regulator acting now or is likely to think about acting now that's the real question and i would like to know why they did not act earlier i refuse to believe that our regulators are not aware of the fact that 3 years ago the net worth of this group of companies was of the order of 20 billion dollars or perhaps less and then in 3 years it shot up to and we know why it shot up we know we know the coziness of a sort of this gentleman with you know who we know perfectly well and the regulators obviously also knew now let's just look at Professor one Mehrotra, company are you saying are you saying that uh, sebi or rbi now are intervening under the pressure of the hindenburg report absolutely they're forced to they are forced in to in other do words it. in other words the clsa fitch you know fitch ratings report which came out several months ago was clearly ignored it was clearly the regulator was also ignoring the fact 
that the mutual funds of the country were not investing in Adani stocks. Mm. The mutual funds of the country are very circumspect. Now, if the mutual funds of the country are circumspect, if Fitch Ratings is telling us that the company is over leveraged, and for God's sake, Fitch Ratings doesn't need to tell us that they were, they, that they were over leveraged. We know that they were over leveraged. Okay. That's the real issue. I mean, it doesn't, I mean, today, uh, uh, there's a correction and an appropriate correction. The real issue is, which needs to have, ne the, the, the country has to ask, what is the state of corporate governance in the country? Hmm. What is the state of the regulator that is supposed to monitor corporate governance? What's the state of corporate governance within SBI? What is the state of corporate governance within LIC, which does manage to spend, to allocate a full 0.97% or nearly 1% of its total assets under management to one group of companies, one. So Professor Mehrotra, uh, what I, are you hinting at a fact that this is an outright scam, an outright fraud? Well, we, we will wait to see. I mean, clearly the fact that Hindenburg has come out with a report and where he invites from Mr. Adani group of companies to challenge them in the US courts and the, US, and the, the Adani group of companies still so far has not said that it is going to take up that challenge. Right. Why? Absolutely. Why yeah. are we not asking that question? We have to ask that question. Right. Because uh, clearly, clearly, a, a group of companies has been promoted in our country as a national champion. And right. a national champion who is attempt who was clearly attempting to become an international big player, not a just a small player, a Absolutely. big player. Let me let me let me take your point to Mr. Subramanian now. Mr. Subramanian, can we really dismiss the Hindenburg report? They had given a list of some about 88 questions to the Adani group. And uh, what reports were coming out, they were saying that out of some 68 questions, they've not managed to answer 62 uh, directly. And those were related to the fraud and those uh, sticky issues on which they wanted the answers. Adani group has failed to answer that. Now, should we be taking this report seriously? Should SEBI take this report seriously? Should the government, should RBI take this report seriously and start investigating the process? We've tried to answer uh, this specific question in our report itself. See, much of the information in the Hindenburg can be classified into three categories. One is information which is known to all of us, right? I mean, which are publicly observable, uh, data points. Two is publicly observable and verifiable. Be it mark cap, shareholding, uh, who are the shareholders, uh, what is the numbers, what is the debt, etc. etc. Uh, even leverage for that matter. There is a misconception that Adani Group is over leveraged. Compared to what was the leverage of many other companies in the past, uh, like Kingfisher or any of those uh, ADAG group, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The leverage by itself, in absolute terms, could be more. But uh, the credit rating agencies and the like usually track what is known as coverage ratios, uh, collateralization, etc., uh, etc. Et which metrics actually for Adani Group companies seem like it is not highly leveraged. Okay, and this is what the CLSA uh, credit. Uh, Report, CLSA report has also pointed out, saying mm -hmm. that the Adani is, uh, is not over leveraged. Uh, three is from the Hindenburg report, the, the crux of the Hindenburg report is that the stock price has been manipulated. Okay, that is the crux. I think media should just focus on that or the regulator should just focus on that. Has there been stock price manual manipulation? You Adani of, is not in the dock. You are saying that Adani is not in the dock because of this Hindenburg report. No, I am not saying that. So, sorry. All I am saying is that the Hindenburg report itself is not just one trigger. Okay. Just because somebody is alleging something 
a regulator will not jump at it. And that too, this Hindenburg has not filed any complaint or at least they have not said that they have filed a complaint with the regulator. They just put it in the public domain, right? So, so all we are saying is that uh, if anything, yes, this is an opportunity for Adani's to introspect themselves and uh, engage with investors, etc. That's another fact, okay? But uh, the crux of the Hindenburg report is the stock price manipulation which they are alleging. The, the entire growth in the stock prices over the past uh, two, three, four, five years has happened over a very thin volumes and they are alleging that it is Adani's related parties only which have uh, taken up the stock price. And that is the crux of the, any investigation, if anything, should happen. But even in that case, there is no specific complaint with the regulator filed by Hindenburg or anybody for that matter. Okay, uh, one. Two is this glorification because of this stock price, uh, this one, etc. It can, and especially because there are offshore entities, even SEBI by itself may not have capabilities to investigate. And maybe some other regulator, uh, regulators need to be involved. Okay, so from that perspective also. Again, so, so let us see that Hindenburg is a motivated short seller, right? And they are disclosing and they are very clear on that. So they are playing just on the stock price movements because they believe that the stock price has gone up. They are selling and they are putting out the report. For all you know, they have closed out their report, uh, their positions yesterday or today and they are going home with a profit and just keeping mum from here because they don't care about a complete with SEBI. They don't care about anything. If anything, somebody should make a file a complaint specifically with the data to SEBI, which has not happened. So you are saying that the complaint has not been filed against uh, uh, the Adani group or nobody has filed the complaint. But uh, how do you see the situation, Giri, now unfolding? Because it's become a political issue as well. Of course, it's related to the economy. It uh, it uh, is related to the market as well. Uh, but all, in, all said and done, does it really impact the economy negatively, the Indian economy, and also the image in the world, uh, not only of Adani, but also about how our institutions are functioning? So, um, so there are two aspects. Um, when, when I was sort of watching this debate, I, I, I could understand there are two aspects to it. Um, but let me take the one which you talked about, the economy. I don't think it will have any impact on the economy and uh, as well as uh, um, uh, the rise of India as a, uh, as a big part. Um, I'm, I'm pretty clear about that. Um, this is something that, is, uh, that has happened. But at the same time, uh, Hindenburg report did have a major impact on Adani stocks. We, we can't say that it didn't have. Everybody knows it had. So obviously, there must be something really worthwhile in the Hindenburg report for the stocks to fall. Right? Let us look at the Adani Enterprises stocks. 73% uh, is held by the uh, Adani group. Uh, 15 is held by some offshore companies which only invest in Adani group. And the rest are with retail. So obviously, what Hindenburg is saying is that there was a stock manipulation and perhaps that that was one of the reasons why um, Mr. Adani's uh, uh, valuation of the stocks really went up and he became the second or the third uh, richest man in the world. And now he's way below that, right? Now, <clears throat> I do agree with the fact that uh, it is it was required for SEBI uh, and RBI to actually intervene, the Bombay bon Stock Exchange to intervene. Uh, considering the fact that a certain amount of loan went came came from the Indian banks, so it it was important that they should have done that much earlier. But there was no trigger as such for them to go ahead and do it. Uh, but now that they have they are acting on it, um, uh, I do hope that they they really go the whole length and find out what exactly is happening. Not not just for Adani, but for the for the Indian no, retail no. investors. Okay, right. and that is very important. And they plug loophole is, is something like that is there. And, and I, I did tell you about it that people have invested in Adani stocks and they have made a lot of money. And this kind of money that they have made is very unusual compared with other blue chip stocks. All right. right. So it, it it leads to a cause of concern, which which I personally feel that uh, the uh, regulator should have actually intervened. 
now that they are doing it uh, it's it's very good but coming back to the economy of the country uh, i don't think it will have any major impact uh, it happens in the us it happens in the west there are companies which which uh, are fraudulent in nature we, we have uh, seen whole lot of things happening in the west and uh, this is just just one more thing and uh, if at all it has a lot more to do with adani than with others and as mr subramaniam said the, the the retail investors exposure is very less we need to keep that in mind okay uh, professor mehrotra uh, there has been a constant demand for a jpc manish tiwari from congress has been uh, saying that there should be a jpc on it opposition of course is raising the heat on it how does this really unfold politically according to you is uh, should the government order some kind of a jpc on this and probably then the reality would come out nilu you and i know perfectly well that no matter what demands are made by the opposition this government is going to stonewall them <clears throat> and for and for the reasons that you and i perfectly well know in advance uh, generally this government doesn't accept any joint parliamentary committees generally this government's approach to parliament is that of sheer arrogance and completely ignoring it by and large so jpc forget about it i mean it's just not going to happen but the fact of the matter is and i go back to where i began that i have difficulty in understanding a statement from one of our one of our panelists who says well someone should file a complaint to sebi are we serious i mean honestly Did, was sebi sleeping over the fact that a, a, a supposed national champion which has been grabbing one government order after another after another in one sector after another after another to the exclusion of firms to the exclusion of a, you know you know the enforcement directorate being sent out to a certain firm you know, uh, just as the adani group of companies is about to acquire that asset De does the whole country not know all this are we serious that that sebi will act that rbi will act when someone gives a complaint to them that shows beyond a shadow of doubt that these institutions are not functioning autonomously and not functioning as regulator they're they're part and parcel of quote and quote the government right that's okay. that's where the question is that's why i'm raising the question right we as citizens need to be asking yes the retail investors are hurting but again as mr krishnamurthy is rightly saying the number of you know investors retail investors is small the we as citizens need to be asking that here is a company which is experiencing stock worth and net worth rising within the country as well as globally people made money up yeah, fine absolutely but okay, what so was the basis yeah. that's the real question Okay, let me get in a short response from uh, Mr. Subramanian and Giri on this. Mr. Subramanian, uh, a, 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 a brief uh, response. We are in the last lap of the uh, of the program. Yeah. No. Uh, see, at the end of the day, uh, irrespective of this Hindenburg report or the uh, stock tanking, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, the same holds good for freeing up our uh, regulators. or uh, having no political control over our regulators etc even last week so so mr santosh's arguments here don't make any sense because at the end of the day <laughs> the same argument could have been made 10 days ago is all uh, my point okay precisely so, of course so whatever, 10 days ago it should have been yeah, done that's a different uh, debate altogether the irrespect of the hindenburg report what else am i saying uh, what else am i saying so, before hindenburg it should have happened yes okay so 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 the only reason why it's being raised in parliament and everywhere is that there is political attribution to much of the success of adanis and 
there is a uh, sort of uh, the uh, in the pinning down of mr modi and the, the conflating of the relationship or the uh, this one more people want to see narendra modi being taken down than uh, adani stock uh, <laughs> this one and the attitude as if okay. uh, uh, narendra okay. modi stock has gone down by 30% or whatever <laughs> So all I'm saying is that this is, and globally, not even today in the U.S., there is, uh, so I would say, a nearness between businessmen and the political regime, right? I mean, that is, globally, that is a factor. And so, so yes, there could be some pushes, there should be, there could be some pulls, but we should not conflate things uh, okay. unnecessarily. Okay, okay. Uh, so both of you have two divergent uh, views, but I'm going to give the last word to Giri. Uh, very briefly, what would you like to say, Giri? Yeah. I, I, I think this is a fantastic opportunity for all the regulators to spread the net wider and see that not just Adani, there are other, other companies which are, which are uh, possible uh, candidates for something like this. Um, they, they should be forewarned, investors should be forewarned. Uh, let us take a cue from this and uh, and see that uh, loopholes are plugged. It's a okay. great opportunity and the regulator should not let that uh, opportunity go waste. Okay, so let's see how this uh, entire uh, uh, process uh, will pan out and what will be the government's reaction. And of course, eyes would be on what SEBI and RBI uh, do in this uh, particular incident. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Subramanian, Satosh Mehrotra, Giri uh, Prakash. It was lovely having all of you on the program and stay tuned to the federal share this video as much as you can. Thank you. Subscribe to the federal's YouTube page for more interesting updates.